and it explains the differences between rugby union and rugby league and a whole lot more. But first, a history lesson. Back in 1823, at a local football match in the town of Rugby, an English schoolboy named William Webb Ellis supposedly picked up the ball and ran with it. Pretty soon this became a popular game and in 1871 led to the creation of the governing body known as the RFU, the Rugby Football Union, of which still exists today. That's nice and all, but why are there two different kinds? Back then, there were two different kinds of players. Firstly, there were the amateurs. These were public schoolboys or people rich enough to play the game for free and who didn't need to be paid. Secondly, there were the professionals. These are the people who were so poor that they needed to be paid to play a child's game because they couldn't afford time off work. Nowadays, being a professional sportsman is quite a good job, but back then it was seen as worse than prostitution. Professionals were usually from the north of England, usually from Lancashire and Yorkshire. Pretty soon though, they realised that being paid money to play a game wasn't such a bad idea and started forming fully professional teams. The RFU, not happy that these northern professionals were beating the southern amateurs at their own game and being paid quite well for it, decided to ban professionals, ban professional sports teams and anyone playing professionals or professional sports teams. The professionals, not liking this, set up their own league in 1895 and called themselves the Northern Rugby Football Union, later to be named Rugby League, whilst the RFU named their sport Rugby Union. These two sports have been separate ever since 1895, and to this day you'll find most of the professional rugby league teams in the north of England, and most of the professional rugby union teams located in the south. Ok, so what is the difference? In general, both kinds of rugby have the same idea. You have to run with the ball and touch it down onto your opponent's in goal area to score. You can pass the ball sideways or backwards, but not forwards. The opponents have to stop you by grabbing the ball carry and pulling him to the floor. The main difference between the two sports is what happens after the tackle. In rugby union, the tackle is contested. This means that as soon as a tackle has been made, the ball carrier must let go of the ball. This also means, in theory, that either player on either team can pick it up and run with it. This is known as the Rook, and it looks like a giant mess of bodies pushing each other and lying around on the floor a bit, and it is, sort of. In Rugby League, however, the tackle is uncontested. After the ball carrier is tackled, the opponent must let go of him, and his team must retreat 10 metres. They must allow the ball carrier to kick the ball back to a teammate, and then they try and run forward with the ball again. The team with the ball is allowed up to 6 tackles to score, before the referee gives the ball to the other team so that they can have their 6 tackles. This might seem like a minor rule change, but this has resulted in two almost completely different sports. Other differences include 15 men play in a rugby union team as opposed to 13 men in a rugby league team. 5 points for a trying union, 4 points for a trying league, 3 points for a penalty kicking union, 2 points in league, 3 points for a drop goal in union, but only 1 point in league. There are many other rules that differ between the two codes of rugby, but those are the main ones you need to know about. American football fans who watch rugby league for the first time generally understand it very quickly, as these two sports are very similar. The same cannot be said about rugby union, which will forever confuse our American friends for years to come. So why did rugby league change the rules? If you remember the professionals of 1895, they needed to be paid. To make more money from spectators, they had to change the rules of the game to make it more exciting for spectators to watch. This includes reducing the scoring, reducing the number of men, and including an even amount of possession by limiting the tackles per team. This is why some people say that Rugby League is more exciting to watch. Union fans would argue that they dumbed down the rules because their tiny little northern monkey brains couldn't understand Rugby Union, but this is certainly not the case. Union fans refer to Rugby League players as idiots, whereas League fans think of Union players as fat public schoolboys who can't take a hit. So what's more popular? Rugby Union is the more popular sport, as it's been around for longer. It's also the de facto code of rugby that you'll probably learn in school. Only a handful of countries play Rugby League, and in fact, the only country where Rugby League is more popular than Rugby Union is Australia. But in reality, when most people say Rugby, they're usually referring to Rugby Union. So which is better? To answer that question, let's use an analogy of chess and checkers. Checkers, like Rugby League, is a very simple game to understand. Every piece is the same, and they all have an equal role. It's a fast game, and you really don't need to be a genius to understand what's going on. Chess, like Rugby Union, is an infinitely more complicated game to understand. Some pieces are different than others and perform different roles. It's a much slower game, and it's all about strategy and tactics. You have to be more tactically aware to play Rugby Union, but you have to be fitter to play Rugby League, as your job mainly consists of running with a ball and being smashed in the face for 80 minutes. So the question is, which do you prefer? Chess or Checkers? Rugby League or Rugby Union? The only way you'll truly know is to watch or play both kinds of games and deciding for yourself.